how's it going guys and welcome to this video for this one we will be looking at the second leg of the copa del rey semi-final taking place on the 29th of february that is this week thursday between atletico madrid and atletic bilbao at the san mames in bilbao but before we go any further guys if you enjoy the content and the video do consider leaving a like behind and subscribing or following the channel depending on whichever platform you're watching this video on it really really helps with growing the channel but without any further ado let's get into it now the last time these two sides went to head to head was on the 7th of february that is just earlier this month in the first leg of this copa del rey semi-final clash that match was played in Madrid at Atletico's home stadium and things did not look good for them when after a clumsy tackle in the Atletico box, Bilbao were awarded a penalty in the 25th minute. Berengur stepped up and made no mistake and despite Atletico pushing and pushing, dominating the match, controlling it, having more possession and far more shots on target, Bilbao managed to weather the storm and come out as 1-0 victors. This means they enter the second leg with a 1-0 aggregate advantage. We start off our team analysis with Bilbao since they are the home side here. The last five matches for Bilbao have ended in three wins, one draw and one loss. Their last match was a 3-1 loss away at Real Betis in the Spanish La Liga. Right now, a very, very important player for Athletic Bilbao has got to be Guruzeta. This guy has got 10 goals and 3 assists, so that means he's right now the spear of their attack. Um, he is the one getting the goals, hitting the back of the net for them. And there was a period where he was out injured and they really, really struggled to get results without him. Next up, I want to talk Inaki Williams with 9 goals and 3 assists. He is just as important as Guruzeta. Inaki was unfortunately missing for um, Bilbao for quite a while as he was representing Ghana at the Africa Cup of Nations earlier this year. He's back now and they really, really need him to come back and to just hit his best form for them in this match. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about Ike Munyain. Now, Munyain's only got a single goal and he seems to have fallen out of favor at the San Mames right now. Um, for as far as, as I remember, Munyain has always been an integral part of Athletic Bilbao, but this season things seem to have changed. I think now, with certain players out injured and other players maybe feeling a little tired, maybe not able to perform, maybe perhaps off form altogether, I think that opens the door for Munyain to make a quick return. Next up, we move on to Atletico Madrid. Now, the last five matches for Los Rojiblancos have ended in three losses, one draw and one win. So it's already looking difficult for them coming into this one. Their last match was a 2-2 draw away at Almeria in the Spanish La Liga. Atletico Madrid have a bit of a problem up front right now. Key players have um, picked up critical injuries that will keep them out for a week, maybe two more weeks. And it means other players now got to step up. Other players like Memphis Depay. With five goals and one assist, Memphis Depay brings you so much pace. And while I think he doesn't have um, the finishing record that Atletico Madrid read night or need right now, um, I think it will be largely up to him to be getting goals. Um, he's probably going to be partnered up front with a player that maybe he doesn't have much experience playing with. Um, so I think he's going to have to shoulder a lot of the burden in this one. Next up, I want to talk Saul with one goal and five assists. Saul's the man creating so many opportunities for Atletico from their midfield. Um, Atletico need goals here. They need to make sure they're solid, but they need to score goals. And I don't think Depay is the player who can create and score. So if they're expecting him to score, then a player like Saul needs to step up and create for them. And finally, I want to talk Jan Oblak. Now, as I said previously, Atletico need to score, but they also need to keep a clean sheet in this one. They're already one goal down. Um, it's difficult for them already as it is. And if they concede another goal, I think it's game over. 
So it'll be down to Oblak to just keep them solid, um, command his back line, make sure they're alert at the back, and just put a stopper in, in any attacks that Athletic Bilbao will be looking to mount. Okay, next up we move on to the head-to-head -head and the S3M2 verdict. Now the last five matches between Atletico Madrid and Atletico Bilbao have ended in three wins for Bilbao and two wins for Atletico Madrid. So thankfully, no draws here. Um, this one too cannot end as a draw because it is a cup fixture. So if we have a situation where uh, Atletico score a goal and it's 1-1 on aggregate, we will be forced to go into extra time and then penalties. So... This one cannot end as a stalemate either. Right now, I think Atletico Madrid are a little strained. They have injuries to key players who I think they've been heavily, heavily reliant on. Firstly, they lost Alvaro Morata just before the Champions League tie against Inter Milan. I think he would have made a big difference in that tie. But since he could not feature, a lot more responsibility was placed on Antoine Griezmann and the player deputizing for Morata in that match in Lorente. Now, the thing about Lorente is I don't think he's a natural striker, but he performed okay during that period. Unfortunately now, Griezmann has also picked up a knock, which means that he also is probably going to miss that match. And when you look at the sheer haul of goals um, between Morata and Griezmann, you got to ask yourself the question, where do Atletico get those goals from now? Lorente as well has now picked up a knock and he might be a doubt for this match as well. So up front, I think Atletico have some serious, serious problems. When you look at what Morata and Griezmann brought to the side, um, Morata was just a constant goal threat and Griezmann was the best of both worlds. He could create and score. Now you look at somebody like Memphis Depay and I think Depay can do either one or the other. He's either going to create a chance or he's going to score, but he can't do both. I don't think he's capable of shouldering that much responsibility. So Atletico have really given themselves a mountain to climb here. What makes it worse is the first leg was played in Madrid and they ended up losing it. And that's not for lack of trying. Atletico Madrid really went out there and they played um, and they left everything out on the pitch. They really did not hold anything back, but it just wasn't enough. Right now, when you look at Athletic Bilbao, however, they're probably going to be missing Nico Williams. I would have loved to talk about Nico, Nico Williams in my team analysis section um, for Bilbao being the younger brother of Inaki Williams um, and just being a phenomenal talent in his own right. But I think the red card that he picked up against Betis is actually going to prevent him from playing this match. So I think that too is just a, ne a major negative for Bilbao. When it comes to injuries though, Bilbao's concerns are more at the back. Ernesto Valverde has to deal with being without his first choice left back and his first choice right back. Um, I think he will be thanking his lucky stars though that they're not coming up against a, um, a fully fit Atletico Madrid squad here because I think if it was a case of them having to deal with Morata and Griezmann, it would have been a very, very different story. When you look at form coming into this one, um, it's obvious that Bilbao are having a much better run of form. When you look at the league table, even though technically this is a, a cup match, the league table does um, speak quite a bit about how competitive these two teams are and how closely matched they are. Atletico Madrid are fourth in the La Liga race with 52 points, while Bilbao are fifth with 49 points, so just three points separating the two, showing they're very, very closely matched right now. I think Atletico Madrid can be forgiven for losing some of those matches. Um, obviously, we've got to remember one of those three losses was against Bilbao. The other was against Inter. Um, and for Bilbao, um, that one loss against Betis is really going to derail them. But I think knowing that one of those wins was against Girona, who's currently competing with Real Madrid for the La Liga title, um, I think Bilbao can take a lot of heart and a lot of confidence from that one. Um, I think right now, honestly, Atletico Madrid do still have the better squad. I think the squad depth in Atletico Madrid favors them. So I do think Atleti have the potential to turn this around. But if Atletico Madrid go out and they concede a goal here, it is game over. Um, I don't see Atletico coming back from a two-goal deficit. 
um, despite the fact that they were able to do so against a Real Madrid team um, that has far more, I would say, quality on paper than this Bilbao team. The difference is Real Madrid will come at you. Bilbao will be content to get that goal and then sit back deep and defend, as they did in the first leg. I don't think Atletico have the ability to break a defense down when they have possession. They're more of the team hitting you on the counter-attack and just rattling your players. But I do think that Atletico have the potential to win this one. So I'm actually going to side with Atletico here. I think Atletico Madrid can get this done. And I'm going to go with two goals here um, for Atletico Madrid. So I think they end up winning this one 2-0 and then 2-1 on aggregate. I think this one is so, so important to both of these teams because knowing that both Real Madrid and Barcelona are no longer in the Copa del Rey means that both of these teams have a very, very good chance of lifting this trophy at the end of the season. This could, in essence, be called the final before the final because chances are whichever one of these teams wins this match will go on to lift the trophy in the final. Hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now along with that subscribe button. So you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there. And we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.